Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and I'm back again with another tricky question. And today we are doing mechanics. So let's just get straight into it. So we have got a particle, and has the particle has velocity v, where v is 3t squared minus 4i plus 2t minus 4j. When t is equal to 0, p is at the fixed point origin. Find the acceleration at the instant when t is equal to 0. Well, we know that there is a connection between position, velocity, and acceleration. And you can differentiate down, or you can integrate up. So we've got velocity, so we're going to differentiate that. So the acceleration is equal to dv by dt. When I differentiate the i components, I get 6... Uh, I get 6t, um, that's it, just 6t, i. And when I differentiate the j components, I just get 2j. Okay, and then I can say when the t equals 0, a, well, the 6t will be 0, so there'll be no i components, so it'll just be 2j. Lovely, that is part a. Not too much problem there. Now part B, I've chosen this question because so many people make a mistake here. Uh, it says find the exact speed of P at the instant when P is moving in the direction of the vector 11i plus j for the second time. Okay, so when an object is moving in a particular direction, then it's j and i component ratio is the same as the direction vector i and j ratio. So it's not the fact that the i component of the velocity is equal to 11. That's not necessarily true. What is true is that if I do the j's divided by the i's, it will be the same for both my velocity expression and also this uh, direction vector. So I say that 2t minus 4 is the j component divided by the i component. And that should be the same for the directional vector. So the, I, the j component is 1 and the i component is 11. So the ratios of the j's and the i's are the same. Okay, so we can um, uh, cross multiply here to get 22t minus 44 is equal to 3t squared minus 4. I can then um, move everything over uh, to the right hand side to form a quadratic, which is going to look like this. And then I can solve that quadratic on my calculator and I will get t is equal to 4 and t will equal 10 over 3. Okay, now it does say here that they want, they want it the second time that it is moving in that direction so that would be uh, t is equal to 4. Uh, so we need to find the speed. Uh, so the speed is equal to the magnitude of the velocity uh, and the velocity at 4, uh, I just need to sub t is equal to 4 into the velocity equation. So I get 3 times 4 squared is 48, minus 4 is 44. That's the i component. And subbing into the j, I get um, 2 times 4 minus 4 is just 4, so 4j. Four okay. Okay. Uh, and I want to find the vol uh, magnitude of that, so I do the square root of 44 squared plus 4 squared. And I'll do that by calculation. Uh, and that gives me uh, 4 root 1 to 2 uh, meters per second to the minus 1. Uh, it does say the exact speed, so uh, I don't want to write that as a decimal. I'll leave that as a uh, exact third. Okay, fantastic. Let me grab some more space and we'll go on to part C. Okay, part C. It says, show that P never returns to the origin. Um, I just deleted this. 
which I shouldn't have done because we're going to need to use it. Uh, in order for me to find whether or not an object is in a particular position, uh, I need to find the position vector uh, by integrating the velocity. So r is what we call the position vector, is equal to the integral of the velocity with respect to time. So I will integrate um, <clears throat> Uh, 3t squared minus 4i plus uh, 2t minus 4j. Uh, and in doing so, I'll integrate the i separately. So that is going to give me t cubed minus 4t uh, i. And there will also be a, uh, um, a constant of integration in the i direction. I'll call c1. Plus, integrating the j's is going to give me uh, t squared minus 4t. And again, there will be uh, a constant of integration in the j direction. I'll call it c2. OK. Lovely. Um, now, what do we know? We need, we need some sort of uh, information in order for us to find out what the constants are. Um, and it does say here that when t is equal to 0, we know that it's at the origin. So when t equals 0, um, we know that we are at the origin. So the position vector is 0i plus 0j. And when t is equal to 0, then all the t's cancel. So I'm just left with c1i plus c2j, which tells me that c1 and c2 are both equal to 0. So we start at the origin there is no uh, constants to add on. OK, so I now know that my position vector is t cubed minus 4t i plus t squared minus 4t j. Now, will it return to the origin? Well, in order for it to be at the origin, it needs to be simultaneously have an i component of 0 and a j component of zero. Now, can it can it do this simultaneously? That's just really important at the same time. Well, let's solve this equation. I get this, um, which gives me uh, this by factorization. So I get t is equal to zero, t is equal to two, and t is equal to minus two. And what about the j components? When are they equal to 0? Well, I get uh, t, t minus 4. So I get t is equal to 0 and t is equal to 4. <clears throat> OK, so um, we have it here that it will never return to the origin because there is not a time where it is both uh, 0 i position and 0 j position. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you do, like and subscribe, and I'll be back tomorrow with a, another uh, tricky question. And if there's any particular topics you'd like me to do, just hit me up in the comments. Bye for now.